Let's practice some more Excel 2013 tables. You can download this file from sdrv.ms forward slash 1d capital M E2 2 UB. Okay, so the idea of displaying only items greater than or less than. So when we have these Excel tables, we have this nice drop down arrow box. So for example, if I focus on this column which has the unit price for all these different items that you can buy. I'm going to hit it down and notice how Excel understands that we're talking about numbers. So we have number filters. So for number filters, we can look for things that are equals to something, not equal to something, greater than, less than. So let's just say we're going to only show the numbers that are less than. We have a budget. Less than or equals to. How is that? Less than or equals to, we'll say our budget is $100. So there's typing in the number 100. Click on OK. And you can see now we have a list of all the items only that are under $100. Let me press Control Z to undo that. Furthermore, you can play around with these different filters. You can see the number filters also has a above average, below average, between certain two numbers, top 10 which actually means you don't have to choose a top 10, you can even choose a top five. And if I click on OK, you can see that these are the top five most expensive items. Press on Control Z to undo that. And notice how when we hit the drop down box here for the some kind of text, we're not talking about number filters, we're talking about text filters. So the category here is electronics, food, toys, electronics, etc. So if you want to hide all the electronics, let's try that. Let's go to the text filters and we'll just say does not equal. I'm going to use the word electronics. So by doing this filter, we're hiding all the electronics and the only things left that we see are the, the food, toys and beauty products. Let's press Control Z to undo. It's amazing how we can even sort these items. So if I want to sort by name, you can hit the drop down box and we can sort A to Z, A to Z using the first option. You can see that beer comes first, comes before C, chips. We can also sort by, from Z to A using the second option. You can see that TV is one of the last letters of the alphabet, the letter T. So let me just leave it from A to Z. Furthermore, you can also sort by the category from A to Z. And you can see that beauty is first. And it's interesting to note that when you click on the drop down arrow for the numbers, it's not from A to Z, but rather it's from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. And in this case, we have the cheapest item first, which is lipstick. Okay, so one last thing I want to show you is the idea of combining sorting as well as filtering. So I'm going to show the, I'm going to go to the unit price here and just use a number filter, show the top 10. Actually, it's changed to the top 5. Click OK. And I want to sort from larger to smaller. So I'm also going to add a nice sort from largest to smallest. This is the second option here. Click OK. And you can see how we are successfully working with two things all at the same time, sorting as well as filtering. Now let's finish this off by removing duplicates. You can see here there's a TV from Amazon and uh, one's for $12.99 and the other one's for $5.27. And there's also a TV from Walmart for $4.99. Let's click on the data tab and then go to uh, with the, the table selected. Let's remove duplicates, see what happens. You can see the entire table is selected by default. And if we were to focus only on the name, for example, if we're only focusing on the name, let's see what happens. And uh, yes, our data does have headers. Click on OK. Okay, a slightly confusing result came up, so it was better to explain it uh, by pressing Control Z until you have your entire list once again. 
So here we have the entire list of goods and we're gonna sort our table by the actual product name from A to Z, A to Z. And we have beer in the beginning. Now you can see it says beer, beer, chips, chip, chips, and from different stores. Let's begin by going to data, remove duplicates. Now by default, we need to remove only um, duplicates that, are, that have exact matches, which means that they're matching all four different columns. But let's see what happens if we only need to match the name. So wherever there's the same name, we're essentially deleting any uh, second occurrence of that name. So we have beer Walmart, beer Target. Let's see what happens to this beer because we're only focusing on the name beer. Click OK. And you can see that a lot of duplicate values have been removed. We lost that beer Target. So the first time it sees it, it's OK. The second beer it sees, it's going to ignore. Let me press Control Z to undo. OK, let's try that again. So let's try removing duplicates. But this time, let's force the matching of the name and the store. So the name and the store has to match for us to remove a duplicate. So let's think about this. The beer Walmart is different than the beer Target because we're considering the name and the store. So therefore, we're not going to be wiping these out. However, here if we see the, see the chips Target and the chips Target, these are duplicates because we're only looking at the name in the store. So my prediction is that the second chips target will be destroyed. So let's focus on this second chips target to see if it goes away. Click on OK. And we remove some duplicates and indeed the second chips target went away. So when it comes to removing duplicates, the key is you determine how picky you want the criteria to be for the duplicates to be removed based on the more things you check, the harder you're making it for Excel to remove that duplicate.